Hi, I'm State Representative Carolyn Tomei, and you're watching Milwaukee Today. Only today, we're doing a second in a series of Milwaukee Yesterday. We're going to be talking with three gentlemen who have lived in Milwaukee, I think, all of their lives. We're talking about Dick Schindler, Claire Kupenbender, and Jim Newman. We're going to be telling us about what Milwaukee was like yesterday. So thank you for coming, gentlemen. We're going to be starting with you first, Dick, because your family has been here since 1880. Tell us about yeah. that. <clears throat> My grandfather came over uh, from um, Wisconsin. His uh, father came from Glare, Switzerland, <clears throat> and he um, and they moved to New New Glare, Wisconsin. And then he, my grandfather, didn't. He, he decided to leave that and move out west. So he came to uh, Milwaukee in 1880, and um, uh, he first just did odd jobs. He worked at the uh, cement works in uh, Oswego, or the. Um, the uh, ore, iron, iron ore, ore. Right. and uh, I remember he, wa he um, rode a bike, uh, a <laughs> rowboat across the river oh, to go to he? work, a dollar and a half a day. But uh, that was pretty backbreaking work there. Then he went to work for my, for his uncle in Portland in a furniture factory, and. Um, Worked there for a while, and uh, eventually he uh, got married, and then he purchased uh, land in Milwaukee at uh, 40, 32nd and Harrison. It was the old Hector, the house he bought was the Hector Campbell uh, house, and who was the first school teacher here. And he had um, all the land from uh, 32nd to uh, 38th, and from Harrison to Har Harvey Street. And then he eventually broke that down, sold it. Uh, and his main income at the time was interest on properties that he sold. But um, he had a furniture factory at uh, off uh, north of Monroe Street on the uh, fish property or the lake there, the stream that goes through the area. He, he used, <clears throat> and they made um, bedroom sets for, uh, that sold for uh, $40 a set. But then the railroad came in and uh, uh, they were, Selling them for eleven dollars a set, so that put my grandfather out of business. Uh, and this is the property that's down off the street a little bit, right? Right, off Monroe, right. Down close to the creek, and there's a house down there. Yes, right? it's a house it's a there now. Area. Uh, Mortensen had it one time. I don't know who's there now, but uh, they use that. Uh, he had used it for power. To uh, the put creek. a yeah, Use the creek for power, right. and that's Spring Creek, isn't it, that goes through there? Yeah. And uh, then, um, where was I? Uh, <laughs> the, the, he was out of oh, business because they understood. Yeah, him. he had uh, he, uh, of course, coming from uh, Swiss heritage, he had they knew how to make cheese and that, so they he. Uh, Grew, uh, bought some anim, uh, cows, and he made some cheese there at the Milwaukee place, and they sold that to uh, uh, taverns and bars. Which at the time, when you went in and bought a beer, they get, you got all you wanted to eat too, and so they uh, sold that. And the uh, the uh, at the time to. They had a large orchard uh, above, which would go up through the uh, Providence Hospital now area, and uh, 
the uh, that uh, I think it was prunes, and again the price was they got didn't get enough a penny a pound or something like that. Right. It was ridi ridi ridiculous. So, but <clears throat> he was in 1903. He was the first mayor. And they. Uh, and what was his name? William. William Schindler, Schindler was the first yeah. mayor of Milwaukee in 1903. He, uh, they, they became a city at that time. Of course, they were here for a long time before that. But because they needed streets and sidewalks and many things that they couldn't do the, by themselves, so they became a city so they could form these different things and make the streets and such uh, properly. The, um, I don't know for sure how long he was in as mayor, but anyway, they did many of those things. Um, I know one thing, he, they, uh, one time the, the streetcar came into Milwaukee, they tr charged 10 cents from Portland but they charged only five cents to go to Ardenwald, which was just as much distance because they went. They took the Bell Rose line there, so they they a bunch of businessmen walked uh, from Milwaukee up the streetcar track to Gulf Junction, and they showed that it was no further than uh, uh, the Ardenwald. So they change the fire to Milwaukee to five cents. Uh -huh. Now where's Golf Junction? Uh, that's at uh, Waverly, at the oh. very north end of Wa Waverly Country Club. Oh, and G-O-L-F, it was even a golf club in those days? Uh, no, it's G, yeah, it's, it was there before was the streetcar even came. Oh, okay. It's the oldest golf course in uh, Oregon. I didn't know that. That and uh, the one at uh, Gerhard. Right. Yeah, or so the two oldest golf courses. Was it always Waverly? Was yeah. It oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. So how about your, your parents then? So my father uh, was Louis Schindler, and he was uh, one of the family. There was uh, uh, Leo Schindler, T uh, Tilly Schindler, uh, Otto Schindler, uh, Lewis, and then the youngest was Rose Schindler. And he um, worked around Milwaukee a lot when he was a teenager, teenager growing up and <coughs> worked for some of the, the meat place delivering. And of course, they delivered ice in those days too mm -hmm. and things like that. And then he went to attend in Milwaukee High School, which was where the uh, city hall is now, was the school. And uh, he, then they, uh, he went to, uh, during the service at World War II, one, uh, in 1917, and uh, uh, came back in, uh, he got out in 1919. Then he went to work for the Southern Pacific Railroad and was lucky enough to get a job. And he had that during, until he retired. He was there 43 years. With the railroad? Uh, machinist. And um, Leo Sandler, who died rather early, suddenly in the 1930s, uh, had a, uh, did much uh, construction house building in Milwaukee. Uh, Schindler and Kerr, and uh, they did, uh, they had the uh, area of 28th Street between and 29th between Harrison and uh, Washington Street, and they sublotted uh, in their lots and mm -hmm. sold the lots and streets and so forth. So they were early day developers. Right. In fact, one of the streets is still, uh, curbs is still, has Schindler name on I've it. I've seen that. Yeah, yeah, on Washington and 28th and Washington. But anyway, that yeah, they were early developers. Uh, 
And you folks were sort of latecomers then to Milwaukee yeah. area. You're, it was <laughs> yeah. your parents who came to Milwaukee. And so how, how did they come? What was well, your... actually, my grandparents, too. They, uh, oh. they were Irish oh. and came into uh, Wallace and Burke, Idaho, where they worked the mines early 1900s. Oh. Then they came to Milwaukee around 1910. And then he uh, started a lath mill that was associated with the Selwood Mill. A later. lath mill? Lath. Lath. Like for lath and plaster. Okay, okay. What they did, they were associated with the Selwood Mill and then Oregon Door Company across the street, which is now um, Raptor's Restaurant at the oh. foot of Spokane Street. And this sure. lath mill at the corner of Spokane Street where you turn down in to go to Oaks Park. It's right in that corner. And they bought the old junk that came out of, uh, of, the, of the Millers and also relatives there. Uh, Millers lot and the best of it, they cut into lath. The rest of it, my uh, uncle uh, put on an old dark colored, I think dark blue truck and hauled it to the grade schools around, slab wood, and they heated the schools around, sure. uh, Wichita School for one, uh, with this old slab wood. Now a lot of the old Milwaukee house being tore down, that's lath that my grandfather had. Oh, for heaven's sake. And then my dad uh, started a sheet metal shop in Milwaukee, which is one of Herman Letting's little units, which is right next to where Milwaukee popcorn is now. And from that, I got to play around on the streets and go into this bank uh, that you were talking about. It left old me. Mr. Stribe would give us candy out of the drawer. And <laughs> now, who was he? Stribe, Strobe, Stribe? Stribe. Stribe. Who was he? He was the one that uh, started the first, the, state bank. Bank. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the first state bank. The first state bank. Okay, and where, and on, where was that? Where was that building? First state bank is this corner building of Monroe and Maine which is the brick building that Perry's Pharmacy was built around. Okay, in and the that's shape. now sort and of a computer place. Computer, right. Yeah. Right. And it was Dr. Remley and Dr. Secor upstairs. They were upstairs, in that upstairs. Building. right. And uh, they, uh, anyway, that was in 1929. Then he moved it and started the uh, shop on 29th Street. This is one of their uh, first trucks. Not so good with that. There's one of his first trucks. Oh this is my. 29th Street, which is houses now Open Fields Inn, and this is uh, the uh, Crystal Lake Park, uh, the the Whitties, uh, Crystal Lake Park. Right. Yeah. And Milwaukee had a chance to buy that park. Yes. Someone was saying for just yeah. a pittance. almost nothing, and it was almost beautiful nothing. in there. Beautiful lake and a, a, a grandstand covered, a softball field. The Milwaukee had a, a softball league that was uh, the Sunday afternoon pleasure at the time. One of them, the green guys in green sweatshirts, were called the Pole Cats, and they were from uh, Charlie Kemmerer's McFarland Pole Plant, uh, across from where Albertson is now, across the tracks. And then another one was my dad's, was called the Tin Benders, and they had orange deal, and, and there'd be pic picnics there, and you play in the and lakes. What? And what time would alleys. this be? What years would that be? It'd be in the uh, late 30s. Okay. And maybe all the 30s for all mm -hmm. I know. I, I, was, I was just born in 1930, so this is what I can remember sure. as a kid. It would be yeah. Definitely before the Second World War. But it was a beautiful place. And uh, Anyway, they moved up and had the shop at that point. Yeah. Later, they bought the, uh, the old livery stable, uh, or, and they call it the blacksmith shop. Uh, right here, and this is the blacksmith shop, and then they hung up the sign that was Milwaukee, M and N Sheet Metal then, and next to it there is the Milwaukee Grange. And where is that now? That's uh, where the um, was some um, the, Cre the credit union. The credit union. Which one? The on right on Harrison between, uh, between McLaughlin and Maine. Between it's a new building where Far West uh, used to be. Okay, right. Far West. Uh, uh, reliable credit. Reliable credit, right. Reliable credit, yeah. yeah. Between, uh, between north of Harrison Street, between McLaughlin Boulevard and Main Street. Okay. And there was a section, there was a mobile oil gas station right on the corner, and then the, this livery stable with the dad shop and the Grange, and then there was another lot on the corner there. And then that became uh, when they built... Where'd I have those? There's there's the picture and the employees. M and M was probably one of the largest and, employers. At and one what was M and M? It was a sheet metal shop. Uh huh. Right. Okay. Look uh -huh. how many people it employed. And also appliances. Yeah. Appliances too. 
This one, it was the plants. The, this is the... And what was Newman's? Uh, well, it, was, it started out Morgan and Newman, only he only lasted a year, but they couldn't afford to change the stationery, so it stayed. <laughs> so then it went Newman's M&N. Okay. And his brother was the office manager of it oh, when really? he came back out of the uh, Second World War. But there's the trucks and the employees and, and uh, whatever uh, that uh, worked there. Yeah. It, uh, it was a uh, large house. They built a lot of things. This is a ship. They built the is in the newspaper. Built in Milwaukee. Yeah, they said the largest boat to be built at the Milwaukee in recent years was launched last month at Wisdom's Moorage, built by Harry Newman and Stanley Byers. The ocean-going tug was first delivered to the United States government, Portland, August 19th. I don't remember what year, but it'd be in the late 40s. And then his Stanley Byers, da, he is the one that put. Uh, Gunderson Brothers in the shipbuilding business in Second World War. He invented the plywood lifeboat and he outdid Higgins in producing the LCM landing craft at Gunderson. They were that was in Portland, right? In Gunderson? Portland, right. They were only supposed to build 15 a month and within before Higgins really got going they got up to 21 or 25 boats and then had to cut back uh, because they were running out of engines and everything else. My dad built fuel tanks for her and all that kind of stuff. From but the sheet metal His shop. Uh, brother is married to Stanley Byers' daughter. Interesting. And how about your family, Claire? Well, my grandparents came to Milwaukee in 1921 from Tillamook area, Nahalem, where they had a ranch and a cheese factory. And they were involved in the coordinating of the bringing all the cheese factories together there to form the Tillamook Co-op. Really? My parents came in 1923. They were married in 22 in, in Tillamook, but in 23 they came out to Milwaukee and first settled in a little house, little rental house next to uh, Johnny Miller's on Miller Drive. And where is that? That uh, Johnny Miller's house was the old Milwaukee police station right off of Harrison. Oh, the one, the building that's still there, the White right, House. Correct. Oh. And there was a little house that sat in there next to that. They rented that for a short time. Dad uh, worked for Johnny Miller at the Oregon Door, which is w what Jim had mentioned there under the Selwood Bridge. Then they moved to Island Station for a short time. Where did they live in Island Station, do you know? I don't recall the exact streets. Uh, they've changed the names down there. I'm not sure just what it is now, okay. but it was right close to the railroad. And then Dad built a house on 28th, right off of Monroe in 1926. Now his was the first house that was built on 28th, and I think, as I recall, he bought it from the Schindler. Uh -huh. uh, it was Schindler-Miller arrangement in there, I know that, all of that. But that was the first house that was built on 28th up in that area. And Dad was a carpenter. Uh, he did some construction. He also worked for a lot of contractors. He worked for Bergamar and Sarmel, uh, one of the contractors. Uh, he was involved in the Milwaukee Junior High, the present one in 37 that they built. Uh, one of his most notable houses was the one at uh, 37th and Harrison Street, right in the jog for Mike Walsh. Now Mike ran for county commissioner. I'm not sure if he ever made county commissioner, but, but Mike was actually married to my dad's sister before she died and uh, anyway this house that, that he built for Mike uh, it's the first house in Milwaukee to have steel beams under it and it was a very very modern house for its day. Is the house still there? Oh yes it's a beautiful home today. Yeah. I'm trying to... Right right as you go up the hill and, and Harrison makes a slight jog at the top of the hill. Sure great. It doesn't make that jog anymore does it? Oh yes. Is oh, it yes. still there? Oh yeah. Guess well, I right don't, you hardly notice it. Yeah. I guess I don't drive yeah. as fast as I used to. <laughs> <laughs> what are some memories that you have, Claire, of, of Milwaukee? It well, seems to me I'm really amazed at how much industry there was in Milwaukee oh, in those days. Oh. Main, Main no. Street, as, as I remembered as a kid, was an extremely thriving, thriving sure. area. There was at one time, as I recall, four or five grocery stores on right. Main Street. And plumbing, electrical. Just furniture. about anything that you wanted, you could find yeah. in Main, on Main Street in Milwaukee. Right. Yeah. And and I re recall as a kid going down there and watching them uh, build the superhighway and uh, planting the big redwoods that are, that are there today. Those were planted in your youth? 
Mm -hmm. The red oh, yeah, the highway was put in at 37. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those are a wonderful sure. welcome to Milwaukee, yeah. I think. Those great we people. remember they get the gravel pits, and the gravel came right behind my house, which is the old uh, uh, Estacada uh, streetcar Car line. Carver line. And the Carver, right. Carver line, and they'd go right down that line behind our house taking gravel down for Super Highway. You call that McLaughlin now. Uh -huh. we yeah. call it <laughs> super it's, Highway. It's not a super. <laughs> so where was your house? On 29th. On 29th. Uh, and there was a gravel pit there? Uh, it's on north of 29th. Sure, it's still there. It's right between the two railroads where uh, Southern Pacific comes together. Kind of okay. an in, back in an industrial area. Okay. Back in there now. Right. And yeah, that was all gravel pit. And back, there's an apartment house built back in there that used the hole and filled back in around it. Ah, one of them. Okay, sure. But that was Hooverville back uh, in the 30s. What's Hooverville? Tin, tin shacks and, and hobos. And why do they call it Hooverville? Well, that was a nickname they all had all across the country. Because <laughs> that was during Hoover. the, de during the Ho Depression. Because yeah. Hoover yeah. Uh, supposedly brought us into the Depression. Yeah, yeah. But uh, as a kid, I remember going back there and having stew with these people. They were fine people. Then. Sure. Yeah. And then, then, of course, uh, where Jim lived on 29th, which was just a block or so from there, we'd sneak through his backyard down into Crystal Lake Park and yeah. Save the nickel admission. <laughs> we maintained the hole. <laughs> but Mrs. Whitty didn't care. And, and the Whitty kid that's uh, done tapes and stuff for him, when he was a kid, our signal, anywhere you were around town, you'd yell Whitty, and that meant get out of the street because you'd be playing ball. And he was the fastest driver in the town. <laughs> and so you would yell Whitty to get out of the yeah. street because he would be driving Whit by. Whitty was the, the what, that was Bob Whitty. Bob yeah. Whitty. Mm -hmm. And he had a brother, too. Bob Whitty, he yeah, had... Well, there was uh, Harry Whitty. Harry Whitty. Harry got onto drugs, one of the first ones we even knew about it before we understood drugs, and that was interesting. But Harry Whitty talks about the fender skirts he had on the back of this old car that uh, Floyd Stoltz built. Pop Stoltz was another old contractor around Milwaukee, and his son worked for my dad, and he built these these fender skirts that covered the rear fender uh, deal in, in our uh, shop there. And uh, it was quite an, he, he had mentioned his father was uh, mayor. My mother was the first uh, woman councilman. Well, say more about that. Milwaukee. She had a pretty remarkable job, as I recall, right? Oh, yeah. Tell us about her. Well, she, uh, Milwaukee at that time had uh, uh, just for years, they were the first ones to do everything, first ones to build a sewage treatment plant on the river to break Portland's back, and so the whole river followed suit in sewage treatment plants. But in the 30s, Portland wrecked, uh, was uh, raising havoc with their water, with all the suburbs, charged they a were, lot of money. They provided water for the suburbs, right? R right. So they dug, a, they dug their own well up on top of Harvey, up above Milwaukee the... Milwaukee did. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And my mother was the, for, was the water commissioner then. The, they took over the pipes from Portland, from Errol Station, Cut the line there, put in a valve, shut off the water for Portland, and and used dug, their, uh, own dug well. their own wells. And those wells were great until yeah, they're like even... ten now of them. Yeah, right. Yeah. But it, but those wells had some of the best water I think in the whole oh, area until yeah. they were polluted by they they figure a mm -hmm, yeah. um, oh, dry cleaning fluids yeah. or something like that. Milwaukee had a lot of good women leaders that were well respected. Uh, you didn't think a woman's lived then. You know the women that were capable got recognized. And Great. My, my mother was one of them, and Teresa Barb Gelata, Dr. Sweeney's nurse, and uh, Blanche Clay, had clip, Clay's Dry Goods. Uh, they uh, Blanche Olson. They held their own, mm -hmm. Blanche yeah. Olson. Well, what did they do? What, uh, what? She had a, a, a five and ten cent store. Uh, uh, They're on Main Street. On Main yeah. Street, uh -huh. yeah. This yeah. is it right, right. there. Right. Olson's yes. Five and Dime, right. yeah. and this is the Safeway store next to it. Oh, that's right. Th this yeah. is all on the... That was the yeah. second Safeway store. Was it the second one? Where was the yeah. first one? The first one was in what is now part of the old Milwaukee Pharmacy, which is gave, uh, uh, the... Uh, oh, that's Price Right. No, no, Price Right was across the street. Safeway was where Bud Smith ended up with his little ice cream shop. Oh, yeah. That was Safeway oh, and then Safeway... Uh, in the... Uh, Right, right yeah. between right. the stairs that went upstairs to Sweeney's office and Hagen's yes. office. Later, Diane's ice cream parlor. Well, I remember it as Bud Smith. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
So yeah. tell me more about the women. Obviously, as a former mayor of Milwaukee and the <laughs> second woman mayor, I'm really interested in my predecessor. So women, well, you mentioned Mrs. Olson, your mother. Who was my, the mother? My mother actually ran the business there. She hired uh, uh, Claire's brother uh, when he came out of the service. was office manager, but she did the office part of the business. Ah. My dad did everything out of the shirt pocket and by word. And that was it, you know, nothing to do with the office part of it. And ah. she actually ran the business, and she was uh, president of the Milwaukee Business Women's Club, and there were a lot of business women then around that time. Mrs. Broad came out sure. with Broad and McClung. That's right. And uh, she, my mother got her involved with the uh, North Clackamas Park, and she became very prominent in promoting that, putting her own money into it and bringing out the first trailer for the first caretaker to uh, go into. And uh, this is the, Bill Broad's mother, right? Yes, mm -hmm. Bill Broad's mother. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, the, well, they they were involved. They got John Gray involved to buy the McLaughlin's uh, dairy for North Clackamas Park, and also Dr. Minkler bought his ten acres where the Milwaukee Center is now. That was Minkler's ten acres oh. to build up that park. Here's Milwaukee was very progressive back. It was yeah. oh, very it much was so. Something. And the women, uh, we never heard of women's lib then because all these women, and Dr. Sweeney's nurse, <laughs> Teresa Barbagelata, was the best one to work for. The, uh, in the spaghetti dinner at St. John's, which is, they, they, these women went up and down the street selling tickets to all the businesses, and they'd bring up all kinds of people. And Teresa wanted the gymnasium to look like Italian, like our dances. And uh, instead of our Catholic kids doing I was going to Milwaukee High School then, and, and Milwaukee High School kids, and we came over and do it. But Teresa says, you, you know, we want that look Italian. We want to like it glorious like your dances. And bang, she'd get out of the way, and we it went ahead happen. and did it. it and happen. she developed that way in that she didn't boss anybody around. She just said what she'd like, and, we, and other people did it. Good for her. And all those women uh, developed uh, much of the business at that time, much more than any of the men did around the time. That's interesting. And they, they were all very well respected. Our time is up. Gentlemen, oh. hasn't this gone quickly? Our time yeah, is up. Sure wow. Is. Thank you so much. Thanks you to bet. Dick Schindler, to Claire Kupenbender, and Jim Newman. Thank you so much. <coughs> and I'm going to be asking you to come back again. This is great. You've been watching Milwaukee Today. I'm State Representative Carolyn Tomei, and we've been talking about Milwaukee yesterday. And we're going to continue this series and be talking with these folks again and other folks who have great memories of Milwaukee of yesterday. Thanks for joining us, and I'll see you again next week. Thanks. Bye-bye.